<laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to make this stylized ice flow material and it's an exercise in a couple of things. It's an exercise in using gradient maps for our color as well as to make highly specific cutouts for our blending. And we're also going to take a look at how we can use external functions to simplify our workflow. And I tried to make this material pretty efficient, obviously depending on your video card, things will run better or not. I don't have the best video card in the world, but I got it so that it looks at least halfway decent when I run it at 2K as well as 1K. I was working it, I mean, I'm working it at 1K, but one of the things that we're going to be doing is trying to get as much detail as we can in the ice. So it looks, I think it looks really nice at 2K and it runs all right. And then it runs pretty well at 1K and it still looks okay. So that is today's thing. And we can get back into substance. And this is what the material looks like in, in my substance designer. So you know, there, there's, there's some stuff going on, uh, but we'll tackle it one piece at a time. And let's come in here and create our new substance and let's get going. So we'll call this ice flow and I'm using the PBR template and I'm going to just do this at 1K. We can always change it back. And all this does really is tell, you know, what my default parent size is when I set it. I can always change it. And this is our new graph. And before we get started with anything, I'm going to switch stuff around a little bit. We're not going to be using an ambient occlusion. We are going to move our height next to our normal because that's how I like it. We're also not going to have a metallic. So we're going to have a specular level, which is actually, I think this is, oh no, they put in, that's base color, height. Oh, we don't have a spec level. We need to add a spec level. So I'm going to right click add node output and let's come in here and assign the output properties. So we're going to make the usage specular level and we'll put in the labels. And for now, I'm just going to put that in there because we're going to change all of that around. And finally, in order to get it to actually be reflected in our renderer, we have to send them back out. So I'm right, I'm going to right click view outputs in 3D view. And if you were paying attention, it kind of changed the specular there a little bit because we added that in. And now we're actually ready to start building our material. If we refer back to my original, it all starts with a basic shape here but you'll notice that I'm splitting it up into two, well, essentially identical effects maps. And that's where our, sh we're going to, we're going to do an external function that's going to run both of these effects maps, but they're, they're, uh, they're the same thing on purpose. And the reason I, I'm making it with two, I tried doing it with one, but I want to get some subtlety of color in here. And the and the surface color is going to be different from the stuff that's going to be dealing with my heights. So I'm kind of obliged to put two separate things in here. Now with effect maps, if we keep the random seed the same and all other things are equal, they're going to spit out, assuming we feed in the same thing, they're going to spit out the same thing with the same randomizations. The key, of course, like I said, is to make sure that the random seeds are the same. So you can do this. I mean, obviously it takes less processing speed if you can get it to work on one effects map, but I really, really, really tried and I couldn't. So we're kind of obliged to do it with two. And that's the first thing that we're going to tackle is we're just going to build this basic mechanic that's going to drive everything else. So let's get back to the thing we just made and let's get started. So I'm going to come into my library and I'm going to go for my shape and I'm going to pull out my shape node and I am going to use a bell. And 
I'm also going to drive the size down a little bit. I had the scale set to 0.85 and that's because we're going to be doing weird things to it and I want to make sure that this thing stays, you know, within its edges because we're going to be warping it and when you warp things, they will go out beyond the tiling edge and you can start getting those weird lines and artifacts. And then the other thing that I'm going to want is clouds too. Now, both of these I don't need at full strength. Right now, they're both at parent size, and I'm going to bring them down a little bit so that they, you know, I, I don't need all of it. So we'll bring each one of these down parent minus two because all I'm really going for here is like the, the basic shape, so obviously no details are needed. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to get a warp node, and I'm going to get a blur node. And I'm going to find a nice sort of root for my shape here. I had in my notes the intensity set to about 29. Let's see where that brings us. You know what? And I'm just, I'm going to also set this to be no tiling. Okay. So I want to make sure that this is like not bleeding over any of the edges. Uh, you know, that's pretty good. Let's maybe bring this down a little bit. And I'm going to get another warp node. This is a nice new thing with the with the latest version. You can just drag out a noodle and it'll ask you where what you want to put there. So, I'm trying to get into the habit of that. I think it it, it helps with the workflow. And I've got this first one and I'm just going to do the same thing again to it. I'm just going to double warp it. Because I'm trying, this is kind of like my basic ice island shape. But what I am being careful about is I, I want to make sure that I've got nothing going over my edges here. I'm kind of close. Uh, I think that's okay because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a levels node here and we're going to clean up anything that's super close. But I don't see anything going over the edges. By the way, the way I did this, uh, the space bar uh, is going to do that for me. Let's get a levels node. And now I'm going to bring the levels of this up so that I get this nice white mask shape that I'm really happy with. I, I want very little grayscale here. And this is where now I really want to make sure that I'm not dealing with any edges. And I, I think that I am getting some issues down along the bottom here. So I can, I can handle that in a couple of different ways. I can bring down the warp, if that's all right. So I've got as little gray as possible because this is going to be my basic mask. Also maybe bring, I think I'll bring the blur up. That seems to do a better job. That right there. So maybe bring this guy down just a tad. Because wherever it hits that edge, it's going to give me a, uh, a straight edge. So, I mean, if it's like super small like that, I don't think it's really going to make that much of a difference. Because that's, that's a straight edge right there. I think that's the only one we've got here. I can probably live with it. That's better. You know, as long as it doesn't read as a straight edge, it's fine. All right. So, we now have this basic blob shape that I'm happy with. And this is what we're going to end up feeding into our various effects maps. And we're, go we're going to have two versions. So we're going to have one that's going to deal with, um, for lack of a better word, height. I mean, it will affect other things, but it's going to be, you know, so the basic height version. And then we're going to have like this surface version that's going to have scratches, et cetera, on it. And before we plug them in, I, we, you know, it's we might as well just build them. And we'll start with, let's start with the height. And for that, I had crystals, I forget the number, but it's this one, crystals one. And I made this parent minus one. And then the other thing I want is a uh, purlin noise, because again, we're going to warp this. And the purlin noise I had set way down. So let's get our warp. And 
I'm going to use, I'm actually going to end up having to get two crystal ones in here. We're going to get another one later on. Uh, because unfortunately you can't size this up with a transform and still have a tile. So we have to make it bigger using the scale. And this one I'm going to set to one. No, sorry, this one I'm going to set to six. I'm looking at my notes because I want these rather large. This is going to be sort of the, the, the big chunks, so these things here. So we want them nice and big. And we're also going to warp it against the purlin, which is also going to be much bigger. So I had the scale down as five. And the warp I had set at about six. So it's not, you know, it's not quite so straight. But it starts giving you this, you know, it, it's already looking a little bit ice-like, you know, as far as the shapes that they make. And I'm going to get a levels node, and we're going to bump it up a little bit. I want my whites whiter, and I want, because I'm going to be basing my height off of this. So, something like that. And let's get a blend node. Oh, no, I can't do that. I have to do it this way, because I want to put this one on top of my basic shape here. And then I'm going to use a darken blend and that's going to just give those little mountainous shapes just in that area. So that's our first shape that we're going to be feeding into an effects map done. And then we're going to do the second version with the smaller version of this. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. I'm We're not using that for this. We're using Directional scratches, I think it's called. Yeah. Now, you'll notice that as I bring these scales down, the the material actually takes less processing. So this one I'm actually going to bring all the way down to one. And we're going to set the angle randomness all the way up. And the pattern amount, I don't want it quite that dense. So I had the pattern amount as 0.15. But, you know, you can set it to whatever you want because this, this is going to be the, the sort of scratchy surface of the ice. So depending on how scratched you want it, that's what you set that number as. And then we're going to get an invert grayscale and a transform 2D. And now I'm going to get these to size so that they make sense against one of these little islands. So I had the transform... Two, three. I set it down so it's um, tiled to 16. So that's hitting the divide by two button four times. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to get another blend node. Oh, I see. I forgot to do something there. And we are going to do a darken blend as well. I just realized that we never set this back up. So I'm going to come back to this first warp node that it hits. I want to set the parent size to relative to parent. And I don't need to do it to this one because it's always going to get its input information from the, from the node that's got that little dot in it. So it's getting its input information from here. So it really doesn't matter that this one is not parent size because it's going to get it from this one. So everything down this chain now is at our parent size, which is here. And we can always switch it. And this one we're going to leave at parent size. And then I think we brought this one down as well. So we're going to have to switch this. And let's do the same thing here. And we're all squared away. Okay, so we're ready to put these guys into an effects map. So I'm going to grab one. And I'm going to set it to grayscale. And I'm going to do input image and let's right click and edit our effects map. I'm going to highlight this, I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to put in two quadrants. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to add an iterate node and I'm going to turn that into my root. And then I had the iteration set to two. So we might as well just set that in. All right, now normally the next thing we would do is we would come into our color luminosity channel and start building our functions in here. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, 
we're going to make an exterior function that we're going to share in here. So rather than starting doing stuff in here, we're going to set it up first. I'm going to create the input image. I'm going to have the input image go in there. And I am going to be affecting the pattern offset, the pattern size, and the pattern rotation with the functions that I'm going to be making later. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just create an empty function and I'm going to put in the variables that I need, even though I haven't created them yet. So my pattern offset is going to be a float to, and I'm going to just manually type in pattern offset, and I'm going to set that as the output node. Next, I'm going to do the pattern size, and we're going to go through here again. We're going to get a float, oops, we're going to get a float two, and we're going to call this pattern size. And we're going to set that as the output node. And finally, we're going to do the same thing with pattern rotation, except for here, it's a float one. All right. So nothing's happened because we haven't really given it any information, but we've got each one of these set in and we have it set as the output. And the next thing I'm going to do is instead of starting to build my function in my color luminosity channel, I'm going to build it externally. So I'm going to come up into my package. I should probably save this. So I'm going to save it as ice flow. And I'm going to right click on it, new substance function. And we're going to call this effects. I'm going to right click rename. We we'll call it effects function. And it's giving me this because it's not actually outputting anything. And this I'm going to build just as if we were doing it as usual. All right, so I'm going to need a float. We're going to need a random. We're actually going to need a bunch of randoms. So I'm just going to put a couple off to the side there. We are going to need a sequencer. And I'll duplicate some of those and put them off to the side. And our offset is going to be a float two. So we're need, going to need to vector this to a float two. And I'm actually going to get two random numbers, I think, here. And we'll do that. And then we're going to set our actual variable. And because we're going to be putting it on the color luminosity, we're going to use that one as our last item. And we'll set this as the output node. And the minute we've set an output, that warning disappears. So now we can come back to our original graph here and we can go into our effects map and I can now create an empty function on this color luminosity channel. I can drag in my FX function and I can set that as the output node. And it's gone ahead and it's randomized that offset. So even though we've just got this thing just sitting here by itself, it's actually taking the information from in here. And what that allows us to do is right now just create a duplicate of this and switch it out. And you'll notice they are identical. And so whatever is happening on one is going to be happening in the other and we can then blend them together and they'll, they'll just actually fit perfectly. We could just work on one and then cut and paste it, but you know, as we're working on it, we're going to have to keep doing that as we adjust and all of that stuff. But if we've got it all working on this external function, it's going to actually affect both of them at the same time. Right. So that's the demo of the concept, but we're actually going to have to do other things in that function to make it do what I want it to do. But let's come back to our external function now, and we can actually see the results going forward as we're working on it in here. So I do want to have some animation in here, but it's also going to be static in certain areas. What I'm going to do right now, rather than worrying about the animation, let's get the basic structure worked out because the way I have it, we can always, we're going to add the anim in later. 
So we've got our basic offset done. Let's get our basic size done as well. I'm going to grab another random. And I, I mean, again, this is a decision that I made. It's an aesthetic decision. I want them to all be like the same proportions. So we're going to have the X and the Y be the same for our size. I'm going to duplicate that. But I don't want any of them to be small. What I really want is for them to run between 1 and 2, not 0 and 1. And that means I need to add the number 1 to whatever's coming out of here. Because this is giving me a number between 0 and 1. And if I add 1 back to it, it's going to give me a number between 1 and 2. And then I'll set this as my size. And we'll grab one of our sequences. And that's changed it again. But they're all facing in the same direction. So now we have to deal with our rotation. Oh, I didn't mean I needed to set a float, not get a float. And this will be pattern rotation. All righty. So that's our basic thing. And if we come back to our ice flow, we see that it's doing exactly the same thing to both of them. The next thing I want to do is set up the masks for my, well, for lack of a better word, zones. Uh, let's take a look back in my original material here. I have three basic zones here. We have clear water, which is here. We have our main ice, which is this white stuff and sort of where it's kind of beginning to crack up a little bit. And then we have this sort of scattered slushy stuff around the edges. So there's main ice, slush, and water. And each one of these is going to require its own mask. And that's what we're going to do next. So I've got a bunch of grayscale information here and I've got a bunch of grayscale information here and I'm going to use one of these to create those masks and I'm going to use uh, the height one. No, I, you know what? I think I'll use this one instead. It's got more, it's got more information about the edges. You know, it really depends on which one I use. Uh, I'm going to use this one and I'm going to get a gradient map and I'm going to switch it so it's grayscale and I'm going to start making some decisions. This white stuff, obviously, I think I want to keep white. And I'm going to designate some of this stuff as slush. So I think my grayest areas here, I'll designate as slush. And my medium areas to, you know, the white will designate as ice. And then the black will remain clear water. So let's come into that gradient map. And I'm going to start with my basic ice. So we're going to, my white areas, and then I'm going to find where I want that edge to be. Kind of like that. But I want everything to be white. I'm making a mask. So once I've found that edge, I can fill it in by bringing my white back. And the harder, you know, the, the, the smaller this gradient, the harder that edge is going to be. So if you want it like super hard, bring it close. If you want a little bit of fade to it, just do that. So that's going to be our, this area and this area in here. We're going to get a separate, we're going to take care of the color separately. And now we're going to do the, the slushy areas. So we're going to want another gradient map for that. Except now I want to deal with the area down in here because we've left this black. I still want my water black, so I'm actually I actually need to do this. We're gonna have to bracket it with black. So we're gonna find this band in between here that we like for our slush. I'm gonna Right. I mean, I've got I've got the basic thing now. I want to see what they look like together, and I'm just going to do this quick and dirty blend here, where I'll I'll just see what they look like on top of each other. 
should probably want to do it the other way around. So these gray areas are my slush, and this is my white ice. So if I look at this, and then I start moving my slush around, it gives me a much better idea of where it's at. So how much water do I want versus slush? And then how much ice do I want versus the slush? So it, it's just a way of visually looking at it as you're doing it. I think I, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. So these gray areas are going to be that you know, the little floaty bits, and then this is going to be the more substantial ice. All right. I think it's time probably to put in some labels here. So we've got our ice height, and then we've got our surface, and this is our ice mask and our slush mask. And we can get rid of that. So right now, this stuff is all solid. I mean, it's this now. Uh, and what we need to do is we need to turn it into this, you know, these dots. So we're going to create a separate mask that's going to do just that. And for that, I'm going to get a Gaussian noise. And I'm going to get a levels node. And we're going to create some of those dots. And now we're just going to make them smaller. I had it tiled to 8, which means we're going to hit this divide by 2 three times. You know, and it just kind of gives this, this noise. And I'm going to get a blend node. And I'm going to cut it out using that slush mask. But I've got this line here. I mean, I can, I can really kind of see it. I mean, I'm looking for it also. But it's got this very clean edge which I really don't want. And I'm thinking specifically about where it's hitting up against the water. Where it's hitting up against the ice, it doesn't really matter. But where it's hitting up against clear water, it does. So I did a couple of things to sort of deal with that. Let's get a levels. And if I run this through a levels one more time, it kind of kills that edge a little bit. And then for later on, I'm going to for the color I'm going to need this. Uh, I want a slightly blurrier version of this so they can kind of have a ring around them later on. This is at, What this is going to do is actually just make them bigger because we're going to run a levels through it again. You know what? Let, let's, try, let's try it this way. I want to see whether I can't save a levels node. No, I don't like it. I'm going to backtrack out of here. And I think we're going to use it like this. We'll save that for later. I've just gone off my notes a little bit, so we may end up changing that, but I'm going to leave that there for now. And we're going to create this final mask that's just going to have the areas of the water black and everything else is going to be white. So we've got our ice mask. And we've got our slush that's actually cut out with that mask. And we'll use a darken blend, or sorry, a lighten blend. And that's giving us that final mask. It's not dealing with the color, but it's dealing with all the floaty bits. So I'm going to take a look right now. I, I'm looking at these edges now. Now that I can see where my ice is, like I'm not liking this too much. So I think I'm going to come back here. Again, we can come back to it later, but it's starting to look like something now. So I'm going to put a frame around this, and I'm going to call it Water Mask. And I think at this point, we can start to put some animation in here. And we can start hooking it up. So let's pick one of these things here to look at that will give us the most information as far as what we want to see animated. I think I'm going to go with this ice surface one again. I just want to see how it moves. I'm going to put it in my color right now. And this is what we're going to publish out for a little bit as we test our animation. But we've got no animation in here right now, so let's start with that. Right, let's come back to our external function. 
and let's get our time variable and let's slow it down because this is ice it's slow I had set on the number 0 0.01 and this is going to be the base so you know we're going to be multiplying off of this but time instead of having dollar sign time as our timer we're going to have it multiplied by 0 0.01 as our basic time for this you can have this thing animate how you want it to and it's really just a question of getting everything to wiggle around I had the pattern offset affected by the time I don't want it to start on a grid so I'm gonna add the number one to my timer here and then I'm gonna fire it up into my pattern offset and I'm going to have my pattern size remain the same. I, I don't want them to change size. So this is going to stay static. And I'm also going to want them to rotate. But I want them to rotate slower than they're offsetting. And I'm going to just have them go at half speed. So let's see if this works and let's play it and there it goes. So it's moving around and it's doing it slowly. We're going to put a variable that's going to let us speed this up, but this is going to be sort of the base speed and then it can get faster from here. So if you want this base speed slower, make it slower. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. So I'm going to double click on my graph and I'm going to create an input parameter. Now, every time you put an input parameter into your material, it requires more processing. So the less of these things you got hanging around, the quicker your animation is going to work. So I, I really want to keep it down to a minimum because I, I want to be able to do this at as high a res as I possibly can. And I want to be, I mean, the main movement I want to see with this ice is I want to be able to move it in X and Y in both the positive and negative directions because that's going to give, you know, that's going to cover all my bases as far as, you know, moving the ice flow. This churning around that we just put in here, we could put a separate variable for that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have it work off of whatever my overall ice speed is. So we need to make that first. So we'll make our ice speed variable and I'm going to make it a float too. And this is going to let me deal with my X and my Y. And we'll have our defaults as 0 and 0. And we'll have our minimum as negative 1. And we'll have our maximum as positive 1. And then we can make our labels. We can do speed X and speed Y. So that's our variable. But this is in our main graph. And our shared ice FX function is separate. So we're going to have to treat it a little bit differently. For starters, if we come into our effects map here, we will see that we've got no way to, to deal with, you know, that input. So we're going to have to take care of that. I'm going to come back into my shared function. You'll see that in the function itself, it also has input parameters and I can create an input here. Now, I created an ice flow right now. We, we, we need a float2. So I'm going to create a float2 input in my external function, and we're going to get our float2. This works just like the main graph. So we've got our input. I don't think we named it. Hold on a second. Yeah, we didn't name it. All right, so we'll call this ice speed. And if I come back into here, and I come back into my effects map, I now have ice speed is a thing here. And I can get my variable, get float to ice speed, and I plug it in there. And I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to do it to my other effects map too. 
So what we're doing, in essence, is we're we're taking we're we're taking information that we're getting from this node here when they're just flowing it through this node and then putting it back out again. And we can now come back into our external function and we can tell it what to do with this parameter that we will be inputting. So we've got this x speed and this y speed. And in terms of actually moving it, the overall material, that's useful. But in terms of getting it to just kind of slowly churn and stuff, I don't really want it to go via the x and the y. I just want it to kind of speed up as my x and my y get bigger, but it's not really, I mean, it's only loosely connected. And so what I'm going to really do is, I mean, it's relatively straightforward. I'm, I'm kind of sort of finding an average. If I'm finding the average, uh, I don't want to deal with my negatives and my positives. I want it to be absolute uh, because you know, by adding, if you're, you know, by doing averages, so you're adding, you know, you're adding the amount of numbers together and then you're dividing them by the, by the number of numbers that you've got going. If some of them are negative and some of them are positive, it's going to mess that up. So I want them all to be positive. So I'm, I'm going to put in this absolute here. And then I want to split them up because remember, this is a float too. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to swizzle out a float separately for each one. So we'll have one of them as x and the other one as y. And if we follow this along, so if i speed is 0, none of this is going to move. And if you've ever looked at ice, I mean, it, it's never at 0. So if we've got this going and I have this set as 0, it's going to look really weird if it's not moving at all. So I want it to be moving by a very, very small number if it's set at 0. And that's what I'm going to do in here. I'm going to take 0.1 and I'm going to add it to both of those numbers. So we're now going to add these together. Now we're making our average, okay? So we have our two numbers. We have our x float and we have our y float. So that's we're, we're adding those two numbers together. And then we're going to divide it by 2 because there are two of them. You could divide it by 2 or you can multiply it by 0.5. I don't care which one you do. And so this kind of gives us that little average thing. And it's just going to affect the time according to just how big all the numbers that are set in here. So if, it, if they're big numbers, it's going to move it faster. If they're smaller numbers, it's going to move it slower. And we just need one more multiplication. And we've hook that stuff into our time. And then all we really need to do is hold down the shift key and move all the other stuff down the road. So let's see if that still works. Or did we forget something? Oh, there it is. There's our ice speed. We've got it going from positive 1 to negative 1. I'm going to put this in here. It's set at 0 now. Well, I don't have anything else going on, but... All right. So what we did was... We put this in the wrong spot. We need to add it after this multiplication. That will probably work better. Let's try that. Yeah, you see ever so, it's moving just a little bit. So that's set. Let's call this slush. And then the other thing that we can do to also give it a little bit more vitality is add an animation in here as well on the disorder. So we come in here, empty function, and we'll just have it wiggle around ever so slightly. And let's hook that bit up because right now it's not hooked up just to see how that moves. So this is at zero. I mean, we don't have colors in here, so we can't really see them moving, but, but we've got the slush is kind of wiggling around a little bit. Uh, so far, so good. Okay, one more thing we need to hook up in here, and that is just our clear water, which again is, I mean, we're, we're spending exactly zero time on that. I'm just going to get a pearl and noise. Oh, 
and I had this scale on this one set to 8 and in fact we're just going to copy this and we're going to put it on this disorder as well and that's our water okay so we're almost there as far as getting all our masks done for this thing the one final one that I want to get done right now is I want to create a separate height map a uh, height mask rather for, for what's going on here with the slush because I kind of wanted to move it a little bit more independently from what's going on with the main ice and it's not wanting to be as flat as the water either I, I do want to differentiate it so you know we're going to have this nice smooth roll here with this water and I kind of want to make it more crackly where this slush is appearing so that's going to require one more mask we're going to come back into the library and we're going to get those crystals again is crystal one and I had the scale set at 16 and the other thing I want to do well you know let's, let's hook it up first then we'll put the animation on because it's also going to have its own little animation we're going to get a blur and we will fuzz it up ever so slightly I had 0.3 set in here take the edge off a little bit and let's get a transform 2d node and we're going to make it a bit smaller so I had just cut it in half and then we're going to get a blend node and we're going to kind of mix these two together I just did it with the opacity I left it at copy and I brought the opacity down to pretty low so what we're doing is we're taking this bigger one and we're just kind of breaking it up a little bit and then we can get a levels node and you know just make it so we can use it as a mask well it's a height map actually sorry give us some nice heights and we're also going to use it I believe for normals or at least mixing it and that's the basic setup but I also want to affect the disorder so we're going to come in here and create an empty function and I'm going to kind of go with the same idea that I had in the in the external function that we made so we're going to get that ice speed float to oh that's a constant try that again and we're going to swizzle out our x and our y's to separate them and we're going to add them together and then we're going to get our average so that's our ice speed and we're going to get our time and then uh, we're going to need to probably slow that down so we're going to get another constant and I had 0.01 set in here and we're going to multiply that again so we've got our ice speed and we're breaking up the, the, the float 2 into two separate float 1's we're going to get the average of those so we add the two numbers together divide by 2 or multiply by 0.5 then we have that attached to the timer and then whatever that time is we slow it down and then we set that as our output node and we can call this slush height and we're not actually going to set up the heights until the next part but I want to take a quick look at this and make sure it's running according to how I want it running I'm going to take a quick look at this uh, how we're going to do that you know what let's just get another blend node for right now and we'll make a quick test right now so I'll put that according to the slush so we'll use the slush mask for that and let's put in this thing for the ice just so we can see what's going on no it's not going to show me what I want to see well yeah it will show me what I need to see I just want to see how this animate how quickly that animation is working yeah no I definitely want it moving faster than that because don't forget it's 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 actually taking I mean you're gonna have to kind of fool around with it until you get it how you like and it's easier to do it now than it is to do when you've got all the colors and stuff so that's why I'm doing it now so it's just less moving parts right now no, that's too fast Oh, because it's, because it's not point 0.1, okay. Let's try it again with point 0.1. Yeah, it's still too fast. 
Oh, I think I know what the problem is. Okay, let's let's tweak this now. Let's bring it back to 0.01. Okay, so that's it, it's giving us truly zero when, when, when we have zero. Now, if I get these both to go up to one, it's still too slow. Because I'm thinking rather than getting an average on these, because it, it does slow it down. Because like if I have one of if I have one of those directions at zero, it's going to give me a much lower number. So I think I'm going to not do what my original notes did. No, I, I am going to take the average. Um, Let's just speed this up. So we've got point 0.1 was too fast. Let's try point 0.05. Yeah, that's the fastest it will ever be, like one and one. So if I got one and one half, that's okay. Yeah, let, let's go with point 0.05 for that number. All right. So this is actually not anything we're going to use. That's it for this video. So in part two, what we're going to do is we're going to take these masks that we've created and we're actually going to plug them into our normals and heights and colors. We are going to add another mask specifically for the color, but we're going to do that when we actually do the color. But this is the, the basic mechanics of it. And we'll pick up from here in the next video.